This is a glass of water, colorless, tasteless. It contains 100 gamma of LSD-25, one-tenth of a milligram, the equivalent of one-six-hundredth of a grain. An ounce of this material will make 150,000 such doses. Let us observe the effect some three hours later. Oh, well, tell me. Well, I just couldn't. I couldn't possibly tell you. It's, it's here. Can't you feel it? This whole room. This, this. Everything is in color, and and I can feel the air. I can I can see it. I can see all the molecules. I, I'm I'm part of it. I, I'm. Can't you see it? I'm trying. Oh, it's just like, like you're released or you're free or... I don't know how I can tell you. I wish I could talk in Technicolor or or let you see it. Can you... Did you say you can see it? No, I can't quite see it. Tell me about it. It's... I can't tell you about it. If you can't see it, then you'll just never know it. I feel sorry for you. <laughs> it's almost impossible, of course, as all the patient fate to describe it. You can only say it isn't, it isn't, it isn't. Trying to tell people what it is. How do you mean that? Well, I mean that there are the colors and the beauties, the designs, the beautiful way things appear. People themselves, dull people, but I thought dull, appear fascinating, interesting, mysterious, wonderful. But that's only the beginning. Men were saying it this afternoon or was taking it. Suddenly you notice that there aren't these separations, that we're not on a separate island shouting across to somebody else and trying to hear what they're saying and misunderstanding them. You know, you use the word yourself, empathy. This thing's flowing underneath. We're parts of a single continent. It meets underneath the water. And with that goes such delight, the sober certainty of waking bliss. One of the questions was, could psychedelics be used for non-mystical problem solving, for scientific, hard-nosed, data-rich stuff? And the answer that we had at the time was nobody had any idea. Well, gentlemen, here's mud in your eyes. Cheers. So we took senior scientists and said to them, we will give you a psychedelic session and the price of admission is a problem that you have been working on for at least three months and are frustrated about and that matters to you a lot. Their problems ranged from abstract scientific equations to practical architecture and furniture designs. We gave them a psychedelic, we gave them some hours to just relax and be with themselves. And then we got them up and said, it's time to work on your problems, and they dove in. I took a trip through architectural history and visited and saw various cities and places. Each subject claimed that with focus and guidance, LSD allowed them to approach their problem with a fresh perspective or instilled them with the freedom to explore ideas more openly. The result? Patents issued, products built, theories extended and improved, papers published, and more importantly, for many weeks thereafter, according to the scientists, their overall level of creativity was up. Dr. Kerry Mullis, I now ask you to receive the Nobel Prize from the hands of His Majesty the King. Biogeneticist Dr. Carrie Mullis had won the Nobel Prize for inventing PCR, a revolutionary technique for multiplying tiny amounts of DNA for use in genetic research. 
A creative breakthrough, he claims, came from psychedelic drug use. I don't do experiments often, you know, in big things. Like, what if I had not taken LSD ever? Would I have still invented PCR? I don't know. I doubt it. I seriously doubt it. It's not that psychedelics manufacture wonderment or that they can automatically make us more imaginative beings, but what psychedelics do is pull us so radically out of our comfort zones. They decondition our thinking. They thrust us out of everything we thought we knew about the world in order to see things as if for the first time and form new synaptic connections. You know, they, 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 they change our context. That's why people take psychedelics and they say, take a trip. Right? Take a trip. Well, look at the physical equivalent of that. Taking a trip means physically go somewhere you've never been before where no one knows your name, see the world differently, and jump into a new culture. Like, I think it has to do with forcing yourself to gain different perspectives on how you see reality. You know, reality is made of language, and so how you map your reality really matters. The words you use to map your reality. And so I think that what psychedelics do is I think they're tools. I think they're tools. That's what I think, which is very different from just fully advocating their use. I think that they're tools that need to be treated with respect. In 1965, the U.S. government began shutting down scientific studies across the country. Fadiman's was one of them. The middle of our seventh session, around really literally noon, a uh, certified letter arrived from the federal government. We opened it, and it said, as of the moment of reading this letter, your research is terminated. The research is over. And I held this letter, and I looked around the room, knowing that in the other room we had four scientists in the midst of a psychedelic session with major problems on their minds. And I said to the group, I think we got this letter tomorrow. Within five years, the U.S. government classified it as a Schedule I drug, declaring it had no medical value. Research hit a brick wall and stopped. And so that was the last research for about 40 years. As many of you know, uh, I am a great uh, fan and spokesman for psilocybin, for the mushrooms. The mushrooms that I am so stoked on uh, were discovered in 1953 by Gordon and Valentina Wasson in Watla, discovered in 53, made absolutely Schedule I illegal in 1966. Thirteen years was the window in which Western civilization had to study this compound and figure out what it was for. And they were just beginning to focus upon it when it was made illegal. LSD discovered in 37, not brought into the scientific literature until 48, not generally available even in the laboratory until 1950 made totally illegal in 1966, 16 year window. Think about the fact that when LSD was legal, uh, psychiatrists, professional researchers were consistently reporting cures of chronic alcoholism with one 500 gamma dose, one dose cure, uh, uh, like a 50% cure rate without recidivism for chronic alcoholism. Spectacular findings were being reported. When LSD swept through the scientific community, it, for, for pharmacologists, psychotherapists, psychiatrists, it had the same kind of excitement and feeling of breakthrough that the splitting of the atom had for the physics community in the late 30s. Uh, we have had um, a mind programming exercise called the War on Drugs for the last 40 years, mm -hmm. uh, which has been designed to create an internal enemy in our societies and convince people that there are these evil, wicked groups who are doing these terrible, sinful things, smoking these drugs and doing, doing this and that, and there's a very dark image has been created around it, and people get very upset irrationally about this, uh, about this whole issue. And actually what's been forgotten 
in, uh, in all of this, and for, for me has become, I, I regard it as an extremely important issue, uh, is that when the state um, sends us to prison uh, for essentially exploring our own consciousness, uh, this is a grotesque abuse of human rights. It's a, it's a fundamental wrong. If, if I, as an adult, am not you know, sovereign, over my own consciousness, then I'm absolutely not sovereign over anything. I can't claim any kind of freedom at all. And, and, and what has happened over the last 40 or 50 years under the disguise of the war on drugs is that, uh, that we have been persuaded to hand over the keys of our consciousness to the state, the most precious, the most intimate, the most sapient part of ourselves, the state now has the keys. And furthermore, they've persuaded us that that's in our interests. This is a very dangerous situation. One of the things that always freaks me out is the people's inability to even consider that there's a difference between a psychedelic experience on drugs and a drug that's going to ruin your life. Yeah, it's, it's, they're not even interested in considering that possibility. There's two different. It's like the same thing. It's like someone resisting. Definitely, and that again, that's the result. Let's, let's remember that they're, they're funded with our money our taxpayers' money, there has been 40 years of programming, more than 40 years on this subject, to make us all develop a kind of aversion of a fear, a hatred, a, 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 a horror yeah. of drugs.